All right, welcome to the podcast. On today's show, we're talking to Julie from Ground Up. Thanks for joining. Thanks for having me. Happy to have you and your baby. Congrats. Thank you. For people who don't know, what does your company do? Yeah, we make delicious nut butters and are on a mission to employ and empower women overcoming adversity. Let's go to the beginning of this. And so uh, what made you want to start the company? Very mission forward. Uh, yeah. What's the mission that you're on? And you know, what was your first step in trying to... Let's talk about the mission of the company. Yeah. 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 So our mission is to employ and empower women overcoming adversity. So we have a six to nine month job training program. So we get referrals from nonprofits and case managers. And really our goal is to provide women with the confidence and skills to get back on their feet and reach towards their goal. And what made you passionate about this specific mission? Yeah. So I'd been living in Uganda and East Africa, overseeing a job training program there and really saw the power specifically for a woman in providing the opportunity and the trickle down effect that that had not only on her life, but in her family and community. So I moved back home to Portland, which is where I grew up. Like many big cities, you see a lot of homelessness, a lot of challenges and wanting to be a part of the change and saying, if this job training model can work in Uganda, why can I not translate this back into my hometown and met with tons of different nonprofits, women on the street and saw that there's this gap in employment for women overcoming adversity and they're motivated to work, but may lack the skills, experience or confidence to get back into the workforce. Yeah. And so we're really that stepping stone launch pad okay. platform. And how did you end up landing on the nut butter? Yeah, how, great yeah, question. Yeah, give us that jump, the bridge you had to build to Absolutely. do that. Absolutely. Well, thank goodness I met my co-founder, Carolyn. I had lots of crazy ideas for products that could be that avenue to teach job skills. And my co-founder, she has SIBO, which is a bacterial overgrowth um, of sorts. And so for a long time, she was on this health journey and was sure. on a lot of doctor mandated diets. Hard to and do. Yeah. That's yeah. tough. It's a tough journey. And at the time on the market, specifically nut butters, there wasn't a lot that didn't have palm oil, powdered sugar, totally. cane sugar, unless you were just going to grind your own. So nuts were something, not peanuts, but tree nuts were approved back into our diet at the time. And she's got a culinary knack and just started experimenting and playing in the kitchen. And we met at the right time. I had moved home from Uganda and had a lot of digestive health challenges and was on my own journey. And nut butter was really something that fueled my active lifestyle. And so we're like, let's try to bring the two together. So you link up, you go, yeah. we think we can do this together. Yeah. Let's bootstrap it. Let's try. Yeah. And then what was the first step? Like what was the first product you guys went to market with or even just like the local farmer's market? We took the cinnamon snickerdoodle, which is still today our most popular almond cashew coconut base. That's kind of our signature trifecto blend that gives it that creamy texture. And we hit the farmer's markets and really hit the ground running. I'm super persistent. And so it was a lot of just like, how can I get in front of as many people as we can to try the product, to get feedback? Sure, sure. Um, and then we were thankful that our local chain, New Seasons Market, took a chance on us. And, and what year us. was that when you first launched it? Yes, yeah, so we launched in 2016, but 2018 okay. was really when we started to, you know, we were working other jobs and it was kind of a side hustle for a while. So that's when we really hit the ground running. At what point do you guys introduce the mission of it? Like when, so you're talking to the consumer, obviously yeah. you have a, a consumer facing product. And so the goal is like, it's got to taste good. People have to rebuy it. Yeah. And, but at what point do you start introducing the story? The story of like mm -hmm. what you're really trying to do is not so much I mean, a part of it is a better product, but another part of it is having impact. Yeah. So at what point do you start doing that? Yeah. So we did that pretty early on. That was a piece that we had a couple nonprofit partners. So we pretty much always had a trainee or at the time we called an intern. So even when we were working out of my basement and producing nut butter at 10 PM, we always had at least one person working alongside us. And that really started each of those individuals that worked with us started to help form that training program and what's really going to be most valuable. What are the greatest needs? needs. And then over time, we're able to build it and hire more. I want to go through, because to me, this is fascinating where it's like, as an entrepreneur, you want to have like as much impact as possible mm -hmm. to the point where it probably drives you crazy, where literally to the point of like, the more impact you have, you have to grow. You want, you have, mm -hmm. so like, if you're just in one store, maybe you have one intern. Yep. If you're at a hundred stores, maybe you have a hundred interns, maybe 200 yeah. interns, you know? Mm -hmm. And so how did you balance that? Like the part of it where it's like, 
Uh, cause growth in some way isn't always up to you either. Like you're subject to the market, which can be mm-hmm. fairly annoying when you're trying to do good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. For us, it has been taking a sustainable path. So we've been bootstrapped to date. Uh, my co-founder and I and not taking investment has been an intentional choice. So we've said no to opportunities along the way that are going to compromise our mission And it's, as you're saying, to employ more people, like it's a pretty clear formula to us. Like people are like, how can I support? We're like, buy our nut butter. You buy more nut butter. We're going to be able to employ more individuals. And so it's really been thus far finding the right partners along the way. And as we've grown, we've had to tweak and make some choices internally with our impact of like, okay, instead of 100% of our employees or individuals overcoming adversity, we need to balance out our team more. So we've been able to have graduates, which is really awesome, move into lead and leadership roles and then be able to influence, which is the most powerful for new trainees that come in to see someone like, wow, you started where I was, you were living in a shelter and now you're in a full-time role with benefits. And like that just cycle is so beautiful. And that's not always the story. Right, um, right. But it's hard. What you're doing is incredibly difficult. Yeah. Yeah. It's difficult and important work. And so we were able to balance out that team so that we could start to take on larger scale opportunities and okay. feel confident in our operations that we have the infrastructure yeah. and we have the training program that's an integral part of that, but okay. balancing it out more. At what point, maybe at 2018 when you guys quit your jobs, but at, at what point did you realize you were onto something or maybe like the product was taking off? So outside of the impact, but the, yeah. you were seeing the product yeah. velocities go. Yeah, I would say that was probably 2019. We started our first partnership with Whole Foods Market in the Pacific Northwest. And that was really, I mean, Whole Foods told me, they're like, you're crazy. We are not selling a jar of nut butter for $12.99. And I was like, give me three months on the shelf. Like, give me a shot. Like this product is different. And just like hit the ground running with demos. Like just how many, I couldn't count how many demos I did in those years. And what's a normal nut butter price at that time? Like Whole Foods is saying twelve ninety nine. It's crazy. Yeah. What was the like number Justin's they wanted like to see? Yeah, like Justin was like $9.99 at the time. Okay. Yeah. So, so not, not too crazy. Yeah, not too crazy. For the but, impact you're having, come on. Yeah, yeah but they it. were still like very hesitant and that was what we were getting time and time again with various retailers. And so it was like, put us on the shelf and give me three months. Like I felt that confident that our product was that good and that distinguished. So I would say Whole Foods Market, and then we also got a collaboration with Burgerville, which is like a local burger chain. They've got like 20, 25, 30 locations, and they took us on for a partnership milkshake. And that gave us some really consistent income that also gave us great promotion around the product, around the mission. And it felt like those first four years, it was every time we're like, okay, impacts working, but we don't know if we can sell enough product to fuel this mission. Those opportunities would come about and we'd get that boost of confidence to say like, okay, let's keep going. I love how you, it's such a hustle that you pivoted to a milkshake. <laughs> like it's such an interesting thing, right? It's yeah. like, that's a, such a brilliant move. And when they're doing the milkshake, are they talking about the mission or was it simple as like, look, it's a nut butter, just go. What's yes. the part of it? Okay. Simple as on their menu. Yeah. Like they say that they use our product. We got a little bit of PR around our story. The milkshake is still on their menu today and okay. has performed really well. And we've done a lot of LTO seasonal shakes with them as well. Okay. But it's definitely product first with that. All right. So you're at Whole Foods. The velocities are going well. You yeah. guys are crushing the demos. It sounds like COVID hits next is the part of the story. Yes. So then what happens during COVID to the business? Obviously, a lot happens with your plan. I'm sure it's uh, not a fun time. Yeah, definitely. We feel super grateful to have stayed in business, specifically at our size, watching so many other companies that weren't able to push through. And for us, we feel really grateful with our mission and being 100% women owned. We got a lot of support. And at that time when consumers were looking for products that they could support that were making a greater impact. We were lucky that one of the products like toilet paper that had a limit for purchase is like shelf stable pantry items. So at Whole Foods, it was like maximum you can buy is five, you know, five jars. And so we actually 
we're really grateful to see some decent growth during the pandemic. And our e-commerce business is something that we started to really push more. We started doing seasonal like flavor collabs. So that was huge, partnering up with influencers, developing flavors that they were promoting. And so that's when our e-com like surpassed our grocery business. How do you manage it all? And so there's a part of it where it's like you're running a CPG company, but then there's so many, I mean, there's a big mission here. And yeah. so like you could talk about the non, not the nonprofit side of it, but I guess the impact side of it almost forever. Yeah. And so it's like when you partner with these influencers, how do you decide from a branding perspective, it's yeah. beautiful, but it's also hard to focus, mm-hmm. right? Cause you can talk about so many things, what's going to yeah. impact the consumer the most. Yeah. So how is it that you navigated that? Mm-hmm. I guess you just try everything and see what works. I don't know. Yeah, you kind of see, throw darts and and see what sticks. But I would say for us, it's really important that the product stands out on its own and that we can look at a shelf of nut butters and I can talk to a buyer and be like, this is why our product's different. This is why you should put us on the shelf. And mission for sure is forward in that and our product really standing out, using clean ingredients, having that trifecta nut blend it's not like when you open a jar of some nut butters and you got to take out your knife and really give it a can good you explain stir. to people why that happens why does it happen why does that why do people have to buy like they have to stir it i mean you look at the ingredient list and yeah. it hardens out like okay. you add right. all the different filler ingredients okay. and it just hardens it it's also the mass production you know, for us, we do small batch. We're tasting every batch of product. We also use fresh coconut flakes, and that really helps with the creaminess of the coconut flavor coming out. So it's really that nut blend that helps for it to be like that creamy. Okay, so because I think the myth is that if you buy all natural, you're going to have to stir it. You're debunking that myth. We are debunking the Adam's peanut butter. I think that's what a lot of people could visualize yeah. with that just like thick layer of oil Oil on the top yeah and that's partially because a lot of brands do still add added oils sunflower oil whatever the oil might be so we don't add any oils and our only sweetener if it is in there is honey was it a huge challenge to get to shelf stable not too difficult yeah yeah so we went because the coconut helped the most that was sort of the secret ingredient yeah okay yep Absolutely. Because that's always a rough thing when you introduce new products, specifically that are natural. It can be a big issue. Yeah. So you got your cinnamon sticker tools, your pro, your hero. Yeah. How many SKUs are you at today? So we have five classic SKUs and then we have a rotating seasonal flavor every month. Okay. So every online, month. every single month. And do you partner with somebody to do that or is it you do? Okay. Tell people. Yeah. So my co-founder, she's the magic behind all of our nut butter creations. I don't know how she does it. You're like, okay, make it taste like a lemon poppy seed muffin in liquid form. And she doesn't make it taste like an Oreo. She makes it happen. So we partner with influencers, a lot of food bloggers, health focused, more so that's a piece like more so than mission, but oftentimes they're excited or willing to work with us at a lower cost because of the mission piece. But then they submit flavors. They'll send us 10 or so. Co-founder will make them up, send them samples, and then we go back and forth until we get to their dream flavor that they're proud and excited to share about. That's pretty cool. Will you ever do it with like chefs? Yeah, we're very open. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like a no brainer. I know like Holy Grail Donuts does that. They partner with uh, like a celebrity chef type thing Mm -hmm. or or just even a local chef on a monthly basis to create a new donut, Mm. which to me just sounds so crazy, but they do it and it works and they have done it every month and the consistency is, uh, I don't know, pretty unparalleled, pretty well. Yeah. There's definitely the extra, you know, operationally, there's a lot of time and investment that goes into it. And yet our consumer is coming to us for that innovation, for that newness. And I think to distinguish ourselves from other nut butter brands as well, having our own facility and producing in-house, we have the ability to do that. So we have the ability to just whip out 3,000 jars of a new flavor, more so than a company that may be using a co-packer. And post-COVID, what happened? So post-COVID, where's the company? Yeah. It it sounds like it all worked out with Whole Foods. Yeah. 
all worked out. We're hoping to grow. We're still only regional with Whole Foods in Oregon, Washington, California. So we're really hopeful for that on the horizon. We were able to move into our own production space, which was a huge goal of ours. So to have our own production and warehouse space so that we could increase production and not have that be a concern and have a safe space for our team and women to work. We were able to launch into Target thanks to a connection there. So that was kind of our first dip into the conventional side and continuing to grow and innovate on the e-com side as well. And to date, we've now had 80 women who have gone through our job training program. Do you have like a favorite success story that you can share? Oh yeah, there's there's so many. I would say one that I would share a big barrier for individuals coming out of incarceration who have a criminal record. That's a huge, huge barrier to enter the workforce. And we had a woman, Jay, who came to us with zero confidence and was like, no one will hire me or give me a chance. And for us, all we're looking for is your motivation to work and create change in your life. And confidence just begins there of like, yes, we believe in you. We want to give you a chance. We want to give you an opportunity. And over the six to nine months in our program, just watched her blossom. And her goal was to be able to give back to other girls and women who had similar experiences to her to hopefully avoid them ending up in the system or if they have to get back on their feet. And so she was able to move into an advocate role at a nonprofit to wow. then bring that just wow. full circle and give back to yeah. other women. Do you guys do anything like a gala or any of that stuff? We yet? don't. So for okay. us, we have very intentionally chosen to be a for-profit business because we really want to set that example for other businesses of being a powerful tool for social good and say, hey, you can you know, be looking at your bottom line, be profitable, and you can make a difference. So really for us, you know, we've been able to access a little bit through city and state for some support. We have a job coach on staff okay. um, and do monthly workshops. We've been able to That's get really a little, yeah, yeah, a little support a for, for that role. Uh, but for us, it's really when people ask how to support, we're like, buy more nut butter, tell a friend, gift it. Yeah gift it out to clients, and that's the best way to really allow us to Have you been approached at all by anybody in the private sector for investment? And what are those conversations like? Yeah, you know, <laughs> we, we have been and we've turned away from a lot of that. Yeah. Um, I think because we've wanted to protect our mission, and it's definitely a very intentional choice to continue to own it, my co-founder and I, and to be able to grow organically and sustainably. So it's it's challenging at times because we turn down sometimes opportunities. You know, many people listening know how expensive it is to grow in grocery. And so we've had to be scrappy and find different approaches to be able to take take some rest. Yeah. Where do you want to take this? Like how, how big do you want to take this? Obviously we talked to Christy. Yeah. So like obviously you mentioned that and she had, I loved her story because she, so many entrepreneurs get it wrong where they think things happen tomorrow or overnight. And usually it's a seven year minimum process. Yeah. And most of the time it's longer. Yeah. And so I think people don't always prepare themselves for the long road. Yeah. Uh, but that's what it is. It's not even a long road. It's just like, that's what it is. And so yeah. you need to sign up for that. But when you think about that, about ultimately where do you want mm -hmm. to take it? Yeah. You know, what comes to mind? For us, it's being able to max out our production space. So okay. that's like tripling where we are today. Okay. And so you have, you have room to grow there. We have room that's to grow great. there, which is really exciting. And that gives us confidence. I think sometimes buyers or new partners can feel like, oh, you're too small. You're too small batch or handcrafted. It's like, no, we have the infrastructure. We built out the operations team in our own space. And now we're ready to take some of those bigger opportunities and partnerships. So with that, we'd love to for our customers to be able to find us across the country at a grocery store to pick us up. You know, a lot of our East Coast customers, they're buying online, but we want to be accessible across the country for customers to be able to purchase us. And with that, we can increase the amount of women that we're able to train and employ and get to that five days a week of production. Any thoughts on going on Shark Tank just to share the mission? Just even to share yeah, the mission. I mean, it's, it's such good PR in, and marketing. Yeah, it's been intriguing. Yeah. So this might be, this <laughs> this might might be, be? when I get on and put in that application, it began here. I mean, it's such a beautiful story, I think. And I think when people can connect to the mission in like a megaphone type way, mm -hmm. it changes a lot of things, which I think is just so important. 
Mm -hmm. And so bigger impact. Where's your weirdest place you've shipped to where you're like, I would have never thought this place, but. (laughs) Oh my gosh. (laughs) I'm trying to think, man, we have people, I feel like I had someone send me a picture of like, found your product at the store in Kansas city, you know? And I'm like, wow, like how did it get there through selling on fair? You know, you end up at just boutique stores across the country. Um, We had a woman whose husband was in the military And so she had, our product was being shipped to Germany, but through like a PO box in the military every month. She was religiously ordering, signed up for our monthly nut butter subscription. And that was just like, wow, it's powerful. I think it's easy as a founder and over time to lose sight sometimes of that connection and to get those emails, hear those stories and be like, wow, like this is, yeah, this is impactful and inspiring. For people that like, how do they consume it? And so what are your favorite ways to consume yeah. nut butter? Obviously, I think people go, oh, peanut butter jelly sandwich, maybe. But yeah. that seems boring. Ours How, is too good, for, too your, good for, for your PB&J. <laughs> yeah. um, honestly, when we do consumer surveys, buy the spoonful is one of the most common. Like, it's <laughs> just like, like that, an ice cream bowl. Yeah, it's okay. like that guilty midnight, get out of bed, just have like a I spoonful. That, yeah, yeah that's, right? Yeah, yeah, no yeah. shame in the game. But I would say for me, <laughs> particularly like fruit is huge. So on like apple, okay. banana, rice cakes with like a layer uh, of this. It's a great just, dessert. Yeah. It just elevates your snacking game. Smoothies. Oh, smoothies, oatmeal bowls. With honey mamas. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. It's like, oh, just honey mamas with a little drizzle is amazing. Oh, but really just elevates any snack. Like you take a bowl of oatmeal that's plain and you just put a spoonful of our coconut cardamom with chia seed and it's like your breakfast is elevated. That's so amazing. How do people find you mostly? Mostly through, it's been a lot through like word of mouth, Instagram, through social media, a lot at like, we do a lot of pop-ups at events, at markets, but it's often someone who tries it and is like, this is my like crack, like I need this. And then they tell a friend who tells a friend and- That's awesome. Yeah. Well, look, where can people find you? Where can they support the product? Yeah, absolutely. So grounduppdx.com online, Pacific Northwest and Whole Foods, Target, and you can check out our find us in stores for boutiques across the country. And if you're up for it, I'd love to do a, a giveaway on the pod. Of so course. So one lucky listener can get this amazing product. And, I would um, love that. And our newest seasonal that just launched with Molly Ye, if you know her from the Food Network, is marzipan with sprinkles. So we're definitely going to include that in the... <laughs> oh, it's amazing. Are there actual sprinkles in it? Oh, yeah. You open your jar. I'm gonna, that's the jar it's I'm going to open in a second. <laughs> Thanks for coming on the podcast. Thanks for your impact. Yeah. Really amazing. Honestly, really, really cool. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, share with your friends, your family, or anyone you might think might benefit from the conversation we've had today. And if you haven't already, please take a moment to leave a review on your favorite podcast platform. We'd greatly appreciate it. Your feedback helps us improve and reach more people who can benefit from our discussions. The best way to stay connected with us and get the latest updates on future episodes is through our social media channels. You can find us at Startup Storefront. We'll be back next Tuesday with another great episode. See you then.